Hey guys, I'm going to show you how you can make your own relatively cheap battery cables here. If you make them yourself. Now, you go ahead and go over the stuff that you need. Obviously, you need some cable. This is a two gauge cable. So if you got uh, red and black, there you need a utility knife in order to strip the cable. You obviously need some uh, terminals here. Now, for whatever reason, these are marked as uh, 2 watt cables. I don't know why, because they are 2 gauge. So. Anyway, need some flux, some solder, and a torch. So, just a little back story on these cables. I purchased them in this, uh, it was a Power Bright uh, inverter cables. That's the box that they came in originally. But the ends of these cables weren't crimped on very well and they weren't soldered at all, so they actually just uh, pulled right off. So, anyhow, I already cut these up. These are about three feet long now. Maybe not even that, but. Uh, fairly short cables and I'm just going to add another battery onto my solar generator here. So I'm just going to go ahead and make cables and I'll put uh, the same end on both ends of the cable. And one other thing you might need is a bench vise so we can crimp the cable on. The cable end on I should say. So let's just go ahead and get started. We'll take one of these uh, terminals out. get an idea of how much cable we're actually going to need to strip off. Now we want a little bit of cable that will be sticking out because we need to have a spot where we can shove solder into it. So we want it to be a little bit longer than what you might think. The cable's only going to go in maybe about that far. So if we strip it right about there, it'll probably work pretty good. So let's go ahead and do that. Usually it's a bit hard to get a camera angle on this, but let's see what I can do. Put it about there, and I'm just going to put a mark there for now. I'll move this out of the way. Stretch the cable out as much as I can. It's fairly kind of stiff. It's been coiled up in that box for a year now, so. Where that mark's at, I'm just going to roll this cable along. And slowly cut into it. With any luck, you'll end up with the cable meeting back around to the other end, which uh, we're actually coming fairly close to doing that. Cable's being a little bit of a pain in the butt though because it doesn't want to twist around for me, but and you can usually start to feel it when this hits the copper. And of course you don't want to cut into the wire at all. This insulation is a bit tough. Just take your time with it. Usually, if you bend it back like this, you can see if it's cut all the way through or not. In this case, you see it's still not. So we'll keep cutting it just a little bit more until it goes all the way through. Alright, so you can see when it splits apart like that, it's all the way through. At least in one spot so far, so keep working our way around it. Yeah, so if we split this, it should be pretty much there, actually. Alright, there we go. So that's cut all the way through. I'll just pull this off. Free this out a little bit when I was trying to... Uh, wiggle this thing loose but it looks like we did all right i don't think i cut very many of the strands off so let's twist this a little bit we'll just test our fit a little one time here make sure that this is 
That's about right. It might be stripped a little too much, but it'll work. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip this, the end of this cable into flux. All right, so now we're going to take some flux. We're just going to dip the very end of our cable into it. It's not going to take too much, so. Something like that's probably plenty. Because you'll still get quite a bit of flux out of the solder as well. So now we'll just slide on the cable end. Make sure that all those wires are lined up so that they'll actually go into it. This is a really high strand count piece of wire, so it's a little difficult. Alright, so at the vise, I'm just going to stick this cable into here. Tighten it down onto here. Keep this whole thing into here. All right, so that should be good enough. There we go, and now we can see that we have a uh, nice crimped connection. And we'll go ahead and solder this thing next. Alright, so I've positioned this uh, piece of wire here in the vise. And I've angled it downward, so hopefully gravity will pull the solder down toward this end of the connector. Because we're going to be putting solder in up here. So, next thing we'll do, go ahead and take our torch and we'll light that. We'll start heating this piece of wire up. There we go. Might actually be just about out of propane, so we'll see how long this will last. But I'm just going to heat up the very tip of this. I'm not going to heat up the wire or anything. I'll grab my solder. And you know it's about ready when it starts to, uh, the flux will start to smoke. Okay, see that smoke starting to come out of there. You know, I have to keep the torch flame on the thing the whole time. Let's keep it hot enough to keep the solder melting. It might take quite a bit with this fairly thin solder. Now that should be a pretty good solder joint. We'll go ahead and let that cool and uh, I'll take a look at it. Just to give you a little bit of an idea here of where that solder actually flowed to, you can see now if we put that uh, connector into a vise and we bend the wire over, it's bending right about here, which means that we've actually gotten the solder all the way up to about right here in this wire end. Should be 
down to there in that connector. So you should definitely have plenty of solder in it. And I'll give you a little look at this. It's not the prettiest thing. The insulation is a little bit burnt up. You can put heat shrink over these if you want to, but it's not really necessary. All right, so the last step is just to clean these up a little bit. Get the corrosion off of them that we caused from all the heating. Just gonna use a wire brush and polish them a little bit. Main thing that I'm worried about is the uh, parts of the connector. I'm not too worried about like this part here. Just the part that's gonna contact the metal. side too. And they should look like nice shiny copper when you're done with them. Alright, see how these look. It's the back of that one. Could probably use a little bit more. good enough. A little bit more work to this side too. Probably works better just pushing it up against a solid surface like this instead of trying to hold it in vice. So there we go. That one's pretty good. Alright so here are the finished cables hooked up to the battery. Let's see, uh, there's another uh, Group 27 battery in each one of these boxes. It's 109 amp hours, and this is a group 24, I believe. 101 amp hours. All ever start batteries. They seem to be holding up pretty good so far. Off of, uh, it's got about 145 watts worth of solar hooked up to it. Let's see what it's bringing in right now. All I'm doing with this is I got the inverter turned on and I'm charging one of the uh, these little power banks off the USB port. So, anyhow, I hope you enjoyed the video about making battery cables and uh, see you next time, guys. Bye.